The Raspberry Pi 4 is a fantastic hobbyist computer and a great way to install emulators and play some of your favorite retro games with ease. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Canakit Raspberry Pi 4, and it all starts right now. Hey there, if it's your first time here, my name is Blaine, and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of your video game experiences. So if you like original content about restorations, repairs, mods, product reviews, and other great video game content, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out. Let's check out the Raspberry Pi 4. The Canakit Raspberry Pi 4 kit includes everything in the box that you need to get started in the exciting world of Raspberry Pi right away. Getting this in kit form is very helpful because it has some things in it that you may or may not have thought about that you're going to need and you'd have to source them separately if you just buy the Raspberry Pi board itself. First it comes with some documents as most things do. It comes with an HDMI to micro HDMI cable at 6 feet in length and it's a good quality cable. It comes with a USB-C power supply and it takes a pretty robust power supply. This power supply is 3.5 amps. It comes with a plastic case to make sure that you don't ground out or short your Raspberry Pi on something on your desk or work area. It comes with a memory card, 16 gigabytes in size, micro SD. It comes with the Raspberry Pi board itself, and it's small. It's only about the size of a credit card or so. And it comes with some documentation in a quick start guide form to help you get running right out of the box. And last but not least, it also comes with three heat sinks to help cool your Raspberry Pi motherboard. This version 4B motherboard is the most powerful yet, featuring a 1.5 GHz 64-bit quad-core CPU, 248 GB of RAM, in this case this version has 4, a 40-pin GPIO header standard to Raspberry Pi, 802.11ac Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0 connectivity. With everything unboxed, let's go ahead and cover setup. Take the case out of the box and you'll find that it's made out of two pieces. They're clear, which is great, so that you can see the Raspberry Pi even when it's in use, and it will help prevent you from putting your Raspberry Pi against something and creating a short circuit which could burn up the board while it's in use. There are also third-party cases available to give you a significant upgrade in this area. Next, unbox the Raspberry Pi from the box and wrapper itself. I would recommend before you install it in the case to go ahead and put the heat sinks on. My wife wanted to take part in the fun, so she actually applied the heat sinks here. There are three of them and they're all made of aluminum. As shown in the documentation that comes with the Raspberry Pi, there are three places to apply heat sinks. The first one, the large square one, attaches to number one of the board, which is the CPU. The smaller rectangular one, which is number two, attaches to the SD ramp. And number three, the small square one, attaches to the number three on the board, which is the USB 3.0 controller. These are all adhesive-based heat sinks, so just peel and stick them right into place. To install the Raspberry Pi 4 board into the case, first take the Raspberry Pi board and then the bottom case. It actually slides in sideways. It looks like it might sit straight up from the top or go in from the back and roll in. It doesn't. It rolls in from the side. Once you roll it in from the side, you can drop it down and then secure the top piece in case it just snaps right down. With everything secured in place, let's take a look at the ports on the device. On the bottom right side, there's a port for your micro SD card. There's a reason I didn't bring this up earlier. You don't want to put the micro SD card in until you put it in the case, or you could run the risk of damaging the micro SD card slot. On the back from the left, there's a USB-C port, two micro HDMI output ports if you want to run dual displays, and a 3.5 millimeter audio output jack. And on the left side, there are two USB 2.0 ports on the left, two USB 3.0 ports in the center, and a gigabit ethernet jack on the right. The rest of the setup is pretty straightforward from here. Connect the USB end of the USB-C cable to the power port on the back of the Raspberry Pi. Connect the micro HDMI end of the micro HDMI to HDMI cable to the back of the Raspberry Pi. Then insert the micro SD card into the port that's underneath the Raspberry Pi. 
make sure to orient the micro SD card pins upward, or otherwise you'll just be pointing them toward the plastic on the bottom of the case, which won't get you anywhere. Now you're ready to attach your input device like a keyboard, mouse, or game controller. Plug it in and fire it up for the first time. The Canakit version of the Raspberry Pi kit ships with an operating system on the micro SD card called Noobs. When you put this in and boot it up, you'll be able to start using your new Raspberry Pi setup right out of the box. It even comes with a media manager called Kodi that helps you manage things like games, movies, music, and other enjoyable content right on your Raspberry Pi. But here's the catch. You came here to get this Raspberry Pi information to play games, not to run standard Office productivity packages on your newly set up Raspberry Pi. And when you go into the Kodi Media Manager and start poking around, here's what you're going to find. There aren't any games to play. It doesn't come with any games set up within Noobs, so you'll have to go and get some content and install it on your new Raspberry Pi B. And I'm here to help you with that. In the next Raspberry Pi video, I'm going to show you how to set up RetroArch Laka right on your new Raspberry Pi 4B and get it playing some of your favorite retro games. Check out this video here shown on screen and linked in the pinned comments and in the description below. I'll look forward to seeing you there in that next video.